Hey, quick note before this episode kicks off. If you're a regular listener to TOEFOP, TOEFOP with friends, Two Guys, One Cup, or Philosophy, then we're asking for your help. We want to keep the show free, and that means occasionally throwing some ads in. This is so we can pay our bills for important things like, you know, questionable art by James Fosdyke. Yeah, but we don't want to support businesses that you don't care about anyway. That'd be annoying for you, it's bad for us, and it's useless for the advertiser. So what we're asking is to get a bit of info from you that'll help inform the sort of brands we work with. Yeah, the survey is quick, and everyone who does it goes in the draw to win 100 bucks. Well, a $100 gift voucher anyway. I mean, that's still more than we get for this podcast. Your input will help us work with the right brands and keep the show free. There's a link to the survey in the episode description. It closes soon. Thanks heaps. G'day, producer Mike here. (coughs) Excuse me. Producer Mike here, jumping in real quick with a final reminder that if you're in Sydney this weekend, it is the first TOEFOP live show in seven years. It's happening at the Comedy Store this Saturday afternoon, uh, 25th of November. We'd love to see you there. There are a handful of tickets left. Will, Charlie, a special guest, it's Gareth. There's a link to the tickets in the show description. Check it out. Cheers. Do, 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 do. A listener. A listener production. The creators of this podcast would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which it is recorded. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are the first storytellers of this land. We pay respect to their elders, past, present and emerging, as well as any Indigenous people who may be listening today. Evan, relax. This is Dofop. I'm Charlie Clawson. I'm Will Anderson. Hello, and thank you for watching. Uh, Will, last night I saw a beetle. Hang on. Last night you saw a beetle, yeah. like, because, like, it's, you know, coming into summer and there's more bugs dung around. I'm I saw intentionally, a dung beetle pushing I'm intentionally a pile of shit. being hilariously <laughs> I'm just like, confused about the fact that it can only be Paul McCartney unless, like, Ringo's just been in Byron Bay for a fucking holiday <laughs> or something and you saw him down the beach. Well, I, look, I have to admit it was a – I I had contemplated buying a ticket, but at the time, Jem was – all over the shop and I was like, how am I going to manage childcare and stuff like that? And then it turns out I got gifted a ticket at the last minute and Jen happened to be home. So it was a very opportunistic, like, oh, I'm going to go see Paul. So let me make this clear. I'm a big Beatles fan, but in no way was I like first in line to buy a ticket to Paul because in my head, I'm like, he's 81. You know, he was mm-hmm. never really my favorite Beatle anyway. Like, am I going to have to sit through a whole bunch of like wings and all that kind of stuff to get to the Beatles stuff? Well, firstly, here's what I would say. I have seen Sir Paul McCartney in concert, and so we can reflect on that when you tell me your story. um, Have you seen this latest tour? or No, not this latest one. I saw the last time that he was in Australia. And uh, so he was a spring chicken, (laughs) mid-70s. That's Mate, if there is is no better advertisement for a vegan lifestyle (laughs) than Sir Paul McCartney, like – like 90 percent that's how we should finish the show <laughs> eat vegan <laughs> thanks for the three hours you've spent with me eat vegan like 80 percent of the crowd would have been of his age and right. they looked nowhere near as good as him <laughs> like nowhere no, near as good he was the best looking person his age in the entire stadium he was the best, that's his not life just his age. going around <laughs> the world for three hours proving to people his own age and older that he is in better nick than them what did you think of the concert when you saw him in 2017 well, I wasn't a Beatles fan at the time. I've only become a Beatles fan since that latest release. That's really <laughs> yeah. now just, and then. It's really and now and then. Yeah. That was the one that got me. I was like, you know what? I get the Beatles well, now. Well, I did because I went with Sammy Cav, and we were joking. Like, imagine like a, a character who sees Paul McCartney and then t- starts telling all his friends, like, I saw the guy Paul McCartney. Apparently, he was in a band. Have you heard of him? The 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 Beatles or something. Apparently, apparently, they're quite good. Yeah, it's the opposite of that movie yesterday. Yeah. Only one person has forgotten that the Beatles existed. <laughs> so here's what's interesting to me about, like, firstly, that song before we move on to the gig is it's pretty good. I like it. Like, I actually thought it would be awful. Like, I was like, why are they doing well, this? Like, what's- your, your mind immediately goes to free as a bird. Yeah. And, you know, that was probably when I was at the peak of my Beatles fandom, when I was, like, reading everything I could find and going through all the vinyls and stuff like that that my family had. And then free as a bird came out in 95, and you're like, this sounds 
awful. Like it sounded like John had sung the lyrics onto an answering machine and they'd taken that tape. And I remember too, like watching the anthology, and because back then I was I wasn't anti Paul. But my reading, my I guess my edgy teenage reading of the Beatles situation <laughs> was that mm. Paul was this kind of like commercial you sellout. Yeah, did choose a side. Yeah. Yeah, did choose a side and you chose John. the- I, cho- I chose John and a little bit of George. And watching that mm. anthology TV documentary, <laughs> like every time there was shots of them together, I'm like, George hates. Look at Paul. Look at George when it can't even God. stand Paul. Won't even stand next to him. <laughs> like I'm suddenly like one of those body language experts, a current affair bring in. <laughs> To analyze like an interview. Yes, like I think all you're just a teenage girl. Like this is, <laughs> you know, what they're doing with the boy bands that yeah. they like or the K-pop bands that they like. You imagine this. I mean, that's part of the Taylor Swift appeal, isn't it? It's like you can follow her career as a sort of broader narrative about celebrity and the celebrity world and how it all interacts with each other. You feel like you're part of this real life soap opera that you can be like, oh, they hate each other or they love each other. And that song's about that person who hates that other person. And the Beatles, as we've said before, they were also the Your original of that. Yeah. You know, they were the original of people going, I've got to choose which one of these I like. And then there's always going to be someone, oh, well, Ringo's the real genius. <laughs> Yellow Submarine's the best. You're like, all right, Joey Fatoni will come along <laughs> for you one day. <laughs> So I had that kind of vibe on Paul and then Get Back was what really turned me around on it because when you watch that series, you're like, Jesus, there was no bigger Beatles fan than Paul McCartney. Like he was desperate to keep that band together. He loved playing in the Beatles. Yeah. If Paul had had his way, that probably never would have broken up. They'd still be touring. Well, you know, maybe yeah. not after Suddenly the you realise John Lennon's George the guy like- who broke up the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. Like John Lennon's the reason that the Beatles aren't together anymore. Hang on, he's the player. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so going into this gig, I was like, because I, 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 you know, I appreciate Paul McCartney's solo career as a musician. It's just not the kind of music that I'm into. But it was an amazing show. Like it was, there was just songs in there, like uh, like Helter Skelter is one of my favourite Beatles songs, and I'm like, there's no way they're going to be able to play that because he's just got to scream his head off. <laughs> there's an 81 year old Paul McCartney belting out Helter Skelter. It was. It was inc- it was incredible, but there was also like because it went for two and a half hours, almost three hours, and so you've got all these like you sort of forget like most bands. So you got your solo stuff or your new album stuff, all right. But then imagine having your fallback position is like, well, if I'm losing the crowd, I'll just bring in a fucking <laughs> a Beatles song, like one of the songs that I wrote. Like that is uh-huh. a pretty good fallback Me, position. The guy who invented most music. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Cav said. He's like, would it be annoying to be a musician in any other genre of music where you're like, this motherfucker decides to play country, plays it better than me. This guy decides to play blues, plays it better than me. Just stay in your lane, Sir Paul McCartney. No, I think the complete opposite. I think it's great that we get this opportunity to celebrate someone who like really was responsible for – like that was the floor of that movie yesterday, not the only floor, but the major floor of it was they had that one throwaway joke about there being no oasis in this world where the Beatles hadn't existed. But the truth of it is if they were playing that movie out realistically, mm. right, uh, then 75% of music would have disappeared yeah. because so much of what modern music is is influenced by the Beatles and the songs that the Beatles were writing. So can I ask you a question? Do you think in the hierarchy of bands – the Beatles are on an island, and then underneath that you have maybe like the Stones and I don't know, like Led Zeppelin Led or whatever, Zeppelin. and then everyone else, or are the Beatles in a group with the Stones and then there's everyone else? Well, I think people would argue Led Zeppelin because of rock and roll. You can see like, you know, how much – and there'd be other They're bands, major I guess, that people would <laughs> – Led Zeppelin, like – yeah, they stole all, all of their, their stuff music. from Wolf Mother. All their music. They stole and, uh, it. <laughs> and then when confronted with the truth said, all right, we'll pay you off and give you a credit, but shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's why they didn't have a problem with Wolf Mother. They were yeah. actually like, you know well, what? They're keeping the spirit game alive. respects game. <laughs> <laughs> the spirit of theft alive. <laughs> it's what we would have wanted. In fact, that might be our opportunity. Maybe we should start a band where all our songs sound like Wolf Mother and keep the tradition <laughs> yeah, alive. I would at least have a good like, good couple of singles, right? <laughs> so you think it's the Beatles on an island? 
I think that people would argue there's others who are contenders to that. And right? obviously, and look, I'm speaking from a ne- very narrow fucking Western rock and roll perspective. I'm sure in other genres of, of music there's pioneers. But I'm talking. I mean, to- oh yeah, I'm not like saying that Paul McCartney is the pioneer of hip hop. Yeah. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I, I reckon if he turned his head, his hand to it, like maybe it'd be a good track. Like he kind of went there by partnering up with like Kanye and Riri. So maybe imagine that at the age of eighty-one, Paul releases yeah. his first ever diss track <laughs> to, to Michael Jackson for trying for stealing the Beatles songs. That would be oh, amazing. Calls him out the as name a child is Paul, blister. and I'm here to say, <laughs> taking my songs. <laughs> was really not okay. <laughs> I was like, everyone's like, Paul, oh, genius. Paul. <laughs> You've done it again, Sir Paul. You have done it again. <laughs> um, I personally think that so much of the modern music that I consume, let's put it that way, because there's probably other people who consume other sorts of music, but whether it be the pop music I enjoy through to the like, again, you know, even things like no, a Radiohead or Nirvana, whatever. Like Kurt Cobain was a huge Beatles yeah. fan. Those things don't exist without the Beatles, mm. I don't think. The way that, that you, I mean, well, would there have been another, uh, were those, there's that argument that all those sort of tunes and ideas and like whatever that we respond to were all out there and they just happened to be the, you know, the gold miner who got to the gold mine on the first day of gold mining you know, yeah, yeah. and just had a knack for it, right? Like, Whereas if other bands had come along and those, like, tunes Are you saying they're and- the Jeff Bezos of popular music? They just got there <laughs> yeah, first. Yeah, right? That's right. They'd done their 10,000 hours. Yeah. They had. I think that's literally in that book they about are. the 10,000 hours. Yeah. They talk about the Beatles and all that time they did in Berlin getting good yeah. and, like, learning all those old classics and whatever before it was that they were. So maybe there is an element of that. And if the Beatles hadn't been the Beatles, then- the Rolling Stones or Led Zeppelin or whatever might have written all those Beatles songs as well as the songs they wrote, or somebody else might have come along and done exactly that same thing again. So, well, here's what, but they were the ones. Here's what Cav said, which made me go, oh, yeah, maybe they are on an island. He said that no one sounds like the Beatles, but the Beatles. Like the Rolling Stones, they're a, kind of a blues band. Led Zeppelin, like they kind of sound like other bands, but the Beatles, because they reinvented themselves so often you can't sort of pin them down and say, oh, they're just this band or they're that band. They're the Beatles. They are this creative force that shifted and changed with every album. And I was like, oh, yeah, I think that does put them on an island because I can't think of another artist, maybe like Prince. Well, the Prince didn't – did he change his sound that much? Yeah, I mean, he did. But, again, within that – I mean, the Beatles always sounded like the Beatles even when they didn't sound like the yeah. Beatles. Although at the time, maybe not, Right. Like, because we're doing that in retrospect and listening to them all as like, you know, maybe at the time when they went from being that very, you know, poppy, preppy boy band, I want to hold your hand version of the Beatles through to, you know, Sgt. Peppers and whatever, maybe at the time that was absolutely mind-blowing. Because, I mean, I remember when uh, OK Computer came out that, like, from, like, the previous what people thought Radiohead were to OK Computer, it did sound like people's minds were a little blown by it. So Not I Ben Elton's mind, though. Not Ben Elton. N- never had to listen to it is what I hear, and I am fine with oh, that. Oh, nice. Squash that <laughs> I feel like well. I've – I honestly <laughs> feel like it. I've completely grown. I enjoyed his book. He came on Willosophy. Oh, did he? I've calmed down. I, also, you didn't ask him. Did you ask him about it on Willosophy? I don't. No, I didn't. Right. I didn't have the courage to ruin the <laughs> nice moment that we were having, <laughs> bringing up something that Some I wasn't even sure that grievance. I was that passionate about it anymore. And here's what I have realised: is I am absolutely not passionate about it anymore. Right. Like one of the now, Charlie, I'm going to break something to you that like is news I've been keeping from you for about a year now. Uh-huh. So I um. Okay. Let me hang I'm sorry on, let me just to sit, sit down. Right. Yeah, could you just sit down? Um, I'm I'm off social media, and what? I've got yeah, I know I've got off How social could you media. Keep this I'm sorry me? to tell. I know. I'm so sorry. It's been a real burden to not let you know that I've been off social media. Oh, but God, uh, one of the things I love about it is it cuts down about half of the opinions that you're demanded of every mm. day. You still have to rate your driver or your like blah 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 or whatever, but you just don't like. And what I've felt it, it, that's had an effect in the rest of my life, I realise I'm not as passionate about, my opinions are not as firm of, on, on things. And so if Ben Alton never wants to ever listen to OK Computer, then you know what? I am okay with that. 
Did you see that <laughs> quote And it, that was attributed to Keanu Reeves? And I don't know if it's legit or not, but it made me think of you. I'm glad Matthew Perry is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I win again. Keanu. No, it wasn't that. Hang on, let me find Here we go. Okay, this is a quote that's been attributed to Keanu Reeves. It says, mm -hmm. I'm at that stage of life where I stay out of discussions. Even if you say one plus one equals five, you're right. Have fun. <laughs> that's a very Will Anderson quote. When I read that, I was like, I can see why Will, Will is becoming Keanu Reeves. You two are actually more simpatico than I realized. You know what? I've been looking for a mentor, a role model. Imagine if I just decided to lean into Fuck. the full Keanu. Move back to Keanu LA, it all. take up yeah. like riding motorbikes, go grab a gig, see a gig at the Whiskey A Go-Go. He's playing in Dogstar again. They're back together. I reckon if you made it your mission, right, you quit everything, quit stand-up, quit TV, whatever, and your job is now just to fucking become friends with Keanu Reeves. I reckon you're pretty charming. You're kind of intellectual. He seems kind of like, you know, intellectually curious at least. You're a massive John Wick fan, but you'd stay away from that. You wouldn't open with the John Wick. But I reckon if you focused on it, you put all your energy into befriending Keanu Reeves, you'd be able to make it happen. Mm. I, firstly, thank you for having that sort of faith in me. I appreciate that. It's um, it's nice that you think that. Here's what I am interested in. Firstly, do you think Tofop is my dog star? <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean? I don't know. What's the analogy? Like, oh, it's just this is it thing this you, weird you, side project that no one has ever really fully embraced, but we're so, extremely and you're still passionate doing it about and keep years. doing it regardless yeah. of there being a general sort of. Oh, God, though. But if, if this is your dog star, then that means yeah. I'm one of the other guys in dog star. Yeah, you're one of the other guys in dog star. <laughs> That's it's more damning. Reeve doing my dog star, and you are one of the other guys in dog star. <laughs> That's the most insulting thing you've ever said to me. But, yes, I think you're right. I think that's a good analogy. Okay, so where would you start? Okay, secondly, here's what I was going to say. Yeah. Do you think it's a problem? How good do you think Keanu – so you may not remember this, but I remember this. Uh, when I was living at the Standard Hotel in LA for a while, I didn't have an apartment over there and I just spent a summer when I was doing gigs in between those gigs living at the Standard Hotel in West Hollywood. And one day – I was down by the pool and at the next table, Keanu Reeves was at the pool oh, and shit. it was early in the morning. I do know and, this um, And uh, <laughs> they they got him a Bloody Mary yeah. and then they asked him to like pay straight away and then there was some like thing over the money. or uh, Oh, no, they just asked him to pay straight away as if they didn't trust that Keanu Reeves. <laughs> had the money. Yeah, the, Post -matrix. He was right for, you know, <laughs> like, you know. So anyway, he got quite disgruntled by the way that he'd been treated because it was just a bit like there was a lot of attitude and I was at the next table. And so he left half his Bloody Mary. And before they picked up that Bloody Mary, I went over and I drank some of his that Bloody Mary. That so, is one of your most disgusting habits. I, I stand by I it. I fucking like, hate it. It makes me ill when I hear about you drinking, uh, especially, was it Steve War's Milky Tea? Steve Wars tea. Was there milk and, in it? I mean, I mean, there was milk oh in it. Oh my god! It's just a I mess wouldn't of describe the bacteria. it as milky. Well, there's milk in the tea. It just means there's more yeah, opportunity. It for I grew up on a dairy farm, mate. Oh, yeah. The cows were full of milk. I'm not scared <laughs> You're of fucking straight milk. Straight from the tea, too. <laughs> so, I, um, like, oh. I, I, I haven't done it a lot. I only do it for special occasions when I like. But is there a chance oh, that my love absorbed. of Keanu Reeves? Some I've absorbed Keanu. a little bit of Keanu in me, and that's like why well, I've, I guess I'm yeah, like developed this a purely genetic, yeah. well, maybe not genetic level, but on a molecular level, because mm. there would have been elements of his saliva in that, and yeah. then you imbibe it, and mm. then it comes part of you at least for a moment. You and Keanu were one, and you should definitely not play this podcast before you befriend him. <laughs> this sounds that's like some <laughs> incel fucking manifesto. <laughs> Yeah, so this feels like this is going to be the major flaw that I've told that story before publicly because mm. if we do become friends and he's like, oh, well, you know what? Like, Will's come to a few dog star gigs. I should support his dog star. <laughs> and Listen so to he you. starts listening oh into the podcast, suddenly discovers how many times we've talked about him on this podcast. He's, he's like, Will, I was on your website and there's a lot of – uh, art okay. that features me in my face. But here's what I'm saying is like uh -huh. if the objective is to befriend Keanu, then yeah. there's plenty. I, I can 
Tofop, your dog star, it will be way down the track in terms of peaking his interest. So I think mm. don't even have to worry about it. He's not the first okay. thing. He's, I don't think the first thing he's going to do. Okay, so let's just go back to how we're going to initiate this contact. So, I mean, do you still have any kind of friends in Hollywood that are likely, you know, that can invite you to an awards show or something where you, where he might be or? I feel like that's not the. I feel like you want a more personal that little encounter poolside. Bloody Mary is the like, opener. Well, not the opener, but I feel like that's the environment in okay. which, like, if this had been my mission on that day, if I'd already decided, like, if flash back to that moment, and instead of me just staying at that hotel and going, "Oh my God, that's Keanu Reeves," that was actually the culmination of what we've just set in place now, and there I found myself. That I think would be the perfect scenario because he was just by himself having a Bloody Mary. I was staying at the hotel. I think I actually could have like, you know, even like after the weird interaction with the, uh, maybe I could have just like commented on, oh, that was a bit unfair or like, you know, like dot, 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 or like something there if I worked on that moment. Like I guess if I had a time machine and I had to go back to, because this is the most likely way I could befriend him, rather than Hollywood Connections is a time machine (laughs) to get me back to that exact point in time. That's the easiest one, okay. Well, because I know that we've already met there. Okay. Right? Yeah. Like that's that was my chance. Can I ask, sorry, just to go back to the Bloody Mary. Firstly, Mm. Virgin Bloody Mary or regular Bloody Mary? Don't know. Can't remember. Okay. Don't think I was paying full attention. Did you drink the just, whole thing or just take a sip? I just had a sip, yeah. And did did you look to see if anyone was looking first? I – it was early. So this was the th- – so I was staying at the hotel and I'd just gone down there to have breakfast and, you know, just do some work. So I'm just sitting at a table. It's like probably – I'm going to say post sort of breakfast, everyone having breakfast, but before people come in around lunchtime, it's in that gap. So there's not a lot of other people around. And I – would have looked. I wouldn't have just like, you know, I would have made sure that there was no one sort of looking in that direction. I was at the table nearby. This is a long time ago now, but I feel like from memory, I just did that thing where I kind of didn't stand up and I just slid from like one chair at the same level over to the other chair. Like even though that meant I had to kind of crab walk just like a metre in between the chairs. (laughs) So if anyone had kind of looked up, they might not even notice that right. I was at a okay. different In table. In my head, right? you were walking yeah. out and you stopped at the table and took a sip. And I'm like, the staff must have seen that and gone, what the fuck's going on? But okay, that's fine. No, 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 no. Okay. All right. So let's say there is a time machine mm. and your mission is still to befriend Keanu. The waiter's a bit of a dick. You can see him disgruntled. How do you, like, do you just, do you just throw it out there? Oh, man, that sucks or whatever. Would, yeah. Would it be a I've- joke? Something like that. Yeah, it'd have to be some sort of joke. It looked like he he, he looked like I'll he was in a what, decent mood, and then it, the standard hmm. of service around here is not great. <laughs> <At> the standard, <laughs> oh, oh <my> <laughs> he just throws the rest of the drink in your face. <laughs> my God, that's not. Yeah, <laughs> that's not great. <laughs> the service here is certainly below standard. <laughs> 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 laughing to yourself, <laughs> slapping your own thigh. He's just staring at you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if this is standard operating procedure, then they need to do a review. Certainly not up to my standard. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. The name of the hotel no. is the standard. <laughs> Got more. Yes. Okay, go. All right. But I don't think that is Stan Dad. <laughs> ah! <laughs> All right, now tell me, what do you say? What do you say? Say, In all honesty, um, replay. In your, oh, say, I'll give you. I'll give you a couple of beats. Mm, replay. Okay. Visualize it. Replay it in your mind, and then you just mm, throw mm. something out there. I'll be Keanu. I'll give you a bit of something to play off. I'll look kind of okay. like disgruntled. Okay, great. Okay. Ah man, if you need to borrow some money to pay for your drink, I'm I'm happy to lend you some if you. <laughs> okay. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's good. Yeah, yeah. Because at first I'm like, of, uh, what's this? But yeah. then it's a nice intro. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Keanu laughs, but he's still yeah. annoyed and he wants to get out of yeah. there. So you've got to make a move. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so, so I trip, I trip him. I immediately trip him. He knows fucking kung fu. He'll kick your ass. <laughs> yeah, but he's not seen this coming. <laughs> no, I say. I, I mean, I think I, if you're patient, point, you let him go. Because now you've got a great way of engineering a second meeting and saying, "Hey, uh, mm. were you at the standard last? Uh, you know that. I'll tell you what, that place is certainly not up to standard. Not up to my standard. <laughs> Start slapping your thighs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, they really need to lift their standards. <laughs> No, you just know they say standard. <laughs> They're standard because you don't want him to miss the joke. <laughs> <laughs> or you might go, I see it's not called the standards hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh. you're right. I think that you have that little moment yep. and you don't push it any more than that. Yeah. And then you've just got to, yes, engineer a second meeting. The second meeting. Because the second meeting that becomes, that's your meet cue. You've had your meet cue. I reckon that's patient. Nice and patient. Okay. So the second meeting, are you engineering in the sense that, like, now this is when you try and speak to your manager or someone who might know him? This is where you might have to, or at least do some research on, hey, like, where does he shop? Maybe talk talk to somebody nearby. Go, hey, you know, Keanu Reeves was just in the hotel the other day. Does he? Just like hang out around here? Does he live around? Like, you know, just mm. kind of ask some general sort of questions because I think people are like, you know, he actually <laughs> loves this vegan cafe over in blah, blah, blah. Or you could go get one of those star maps, find out where he lives yeah. and then like say anything John Cusack style to stand under his window with a boombox saying, certainly not up to standard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's say um, he's got that motorbike shop. I think it's called Thunder yeah. Road or something like that. And yes. the staff say, oh, no, he um, mm. uh, he doesn't live right here, here, but his store's down the road. You see him all the time. He's often in the in the shop. He's, right. Are you confident to make a second approach in the shop in front of like his yeah, staff? Here's how I'm going to do it. Yeah. Is I'm going to take some time. It's not going to be the next day. I think the incident with the Bloody Mary – at the Standard Hotel, even in Keanu Reeves's world, I think you remember that for a couple of weeks, right? So I think that's my period of time that I, sh- I should wait as long as I'm ha- happy that he'll still remember the moment but not like, you know, but not immediately because here's what I want to do in the meantime. I need to learn how to ride a motorbike. Oh, yeah. Got so <laughs> the good news is I rode a motorbike up until the age of about 15. So – I have in my life a very long time ago had the capacity to ride a motorbike to the level that I could get like a learner's permit to <laughs> ride the motorbike. So I think about you trying to get on and off a motorbike with your hips though. Like- that is going to be the major problem. So I feel like <laughs> Leather pants my backstory too. becomes <laughs> Leather pants with bad hips. you just got zero so, mobility from the waist down. So I feel like this is my end though, right? Yeah. So I, I pop down to the shop, like I do a little bit of research about like what motorbikes are good for people who have got bad hips, right? Pop down the shop, start asking a few questions, tell them my backstory. I used to ride motorbikes until I was about 15 years old, but like I got bad hips now, but you know, at this age of my life, I'd really love to get back into it, but I just don't know if I'm going to physically be able to. I know, love blah, that blah, blah, because blah. you're also, that, that elicits sympathy, you know what yeah, I mean? Right. And you're buying into their dream. Yeah. Yeah. People want to help you in that situation. Yeah. And then fast forward two weeks later, I'm riding around in LA, driven in a sidecar by Keanu Reeves. <laughs> okay, well, I just bump the brakes a little. <laughs> well, yada, yada, yada. I'm in the sidecar. Keanu's taking me for a ride around LA. No, so let's let let's yep. be, let's be serious. <laughs> so, okay, let's be serious. Okay. So you're in the you- – Would you say that that riff was not up to our standard? <laughs> You're in the motorbike shop, so uh, you go in. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, look, uh, hey, uh, yeah. I want to ride motorbikes. I used to do as a kid, but I've you know, got this uh, chronic arthritis on my hips now. I really love your advice. Keanu is there. So you're talking to the guy who, like the manager of the shop, but Keanu's there. I feel there. like I've been in a couple of times okay. already. Scope Keanu hasn't, 
So I'm like having this ongoing conversation with this guy okay. around and like, hey, can you give me anything to research? I'd love to be able to go and like read more about it or find out what my options are. Like, you know, and just kind of checking back in. Hey, I read that article that you recommended to me. Thank you very much. Can you explain to me what this is? Like be yeah. a real sort of, yeah. you know, don't be an annoying person to be coming back. Like be somebody hopefully that they're like engaged with and like, you know, buy some stuff, like support the business in some sort of way. But I'm waiting by the time that I get there, I don't want to have to tell Keanu my story. I want the guys in the shop or oh, the guys and girls perfect. in the shop to be invested in my story. Yeah. This is this guy. This is like what he's up to. Keanu's just there one day. They're like, oh, this is, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then after they've said that, I'm like, this might sound weird, but do you remember at the Standard Hotel like two weeks ago you were – uh, you know, you got a drink and they're like, they were annoying Sorry, you. Sorry, I'm just going to pause you right yeah. there. I immediately red flags went off for me if I'm Keanu. I just, really? I, yeah. No, I just but think got it's the too whole convenient. Cycle thing. I just, you, like, I, I, see, it, I think. Have you I've, seen I've, him in I've the store? I've done it very before, quickly. Have you but seen him I'm in the I'm suggesting that, like, no, because you can't, you can't ignore it. The first time you meet him. No, you can't. Because, you've got to bring so, it up. Otherwise, so it's So that's weird. why I was saying you've okay. got to put this work into the bike backstory. Okay, sorry. I understand. Because that. I think that the – let's say we've talked for 15, 20 minutes about the bike and my like wanting to get back into it, my injury and blah, blah, blah. I feel like by then, yes, in that – just then when I did it in 90 seconds, it felt too quick. But this is the whole point of this backstory about the bike is that it's meant to be all about that. And then it would be ridiculous for me – to not mention it the first time that I see him. Yeah, because so I, I, you, I misunderstood. I thought maybe Keanu yeah. had been in the store in your two-week prep period, but you're saying, no, no the first time, you, yeah, that makes sense to bring it up. Yeah, okay. yeah. So this is the first time that I meet him, I bring up this story. Yeah. I say, I didn't want to say anything, like, and then this becomes a story about me not being a weirdo. I was like, sorry, I didn't even, like, realise this was your shop. It's amazing, by the way. Like, it's incredible what, you, you know, you so do well, with all Will. this sort of stuff. This but, is so like, great. And, like, I just saw they – I was staying at the hotel and, like, I saw how they treated you. I was at the next table. I obviously didn't want to get okay. in your personal space or say anything. All right, now I'm going to be time, Keanu for we, a bit because I think this yeah. is all very charming and very engaging. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah. you're an arsey, right? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm oh, Australian. yeah, I love it down there. I made some, yeah, man. I made some movies down there. Yeah, I know. I, I used to live in Bondi and oh, there yeah. was a yeah. falafel shop oh, cool. on the corner down there that, like, you absolutely loved. They had the, your picture up oh, in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. The thing that place was great, yeah. 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 Okay, like, man. Well, cool. Do you like LA? Yeah, man. I, yeah, I really do love it. Is there anywhere good that I can get, like, falafels Oh, like yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a great place down on, on uh, La Cienega. <laughs> Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> <laughs> La Cienega, that's, a, that's a great place <laughs> down uh, downtown. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just say I'll keep it safe. <laughs> okay, man. Well, you're going to ride bikes? Cool. All right. Good luck. Because now he's Love. pulling away. He's in the, yeah, in yeah. the conversation. Okay. And that's that's it. I'm, I'm going to let that. I'm going to let that conversation end at that point. I feel like. That is all the work I need to do. I'll say, I'll say just one more thing before you go. Thank you so much for your, like taking the time to talk to me today. I really like, you know, appreciate it very much. I'll check out that falafel place. Um, but would you say that the service you got at that hotel was <laughs> not up to standard? Well, you know, it's funny. It's called the stand. stand. Oh, no, hang on, I'm going to make sure this works with the accent. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny you should say that because the place is called the standard, but it's more like a stand dud. Oh yes. Oh I mean, you and Keanu high five. Yeah, high five. We're bonded forever. I reckon that's next, great. Next thing you see, me in the sidecar, Keanu around LA, both eating falafels. Just shoot I'm throwing falafels into his mouth yeah. as he rides the motorbike. Best friends forever. Okay, I reckon that's brilliant. Great. Like, totally. And I think he's on board. And I think he'll remember you because you're the Aussie who yep. was talking about that falafel place, a lot of personal connection, and you weren't yep. too weird. You weren't too full on or anything like that. Polite, just exactly what you need. Okay. How, what's the second meeting going to be like or the third? 
<sighs> um, I chain him to a bed, chop off his leg, <laughs> and make him do a... Do, do John Wick's <laughs> soliloquies forever. <laughs> You can't end the cock and duty franchise. <laughs> you dirty um, bird. Uh, I think. Go to a dog star gig? Too weird. Mm, nah, feels too weird. Okay, you need a more um, person. You need a person in common now because I think you've broken down one layer of like, you know, he would have. Here's what I feel like I need one more of, but I'm going to do it like this. Another bike shop interaction at some point after I've had the falafels. Let's just say a week or two again. Give me, but I've gone and checked out the falafel place. Oh, good. I've gone back in the bike shop. See, he's there. Don't want to bother you. Thank yeah, but um, Thanks you gave tip. me that recommendation for the falafel place, and it is yeah, absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. And yeah, just cool. go, cool. just go. Yeah, okay. Yep. That's, right. That's so like, that's a nice just, little top up of Will Anderson. That he's got in yep. his head. But, but also just a reinforcement of like, you know. We're just friends, man. We're just two yeah. guys. Just yeah, Don't want anything really from you. Definitely don't. That. Definitely not have been planning this for years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you need a more, a you, yeah. you need a, a like a more, a, a proper conversation now to kind mm. of, I think, seal the deal a little yeah. bit. Yeah. This is where it gets a little tricky because like anything like just in, convenient now is, is going to be suspect. Be suspect, I think. All right. So we know he likes to ride motorbikes. He likes to play in Dog Star. He's quite literate. So I think maybe if there was some connection, like your manager or, or someone, you mm -hmm. could get to him. Maybe if there was some kind of event like a writer's festival or something unrelated to Hollywood. I think that's – Still feels pretty convenient though. You know what I mean? Like – We've had these interactions, then suddenly I'm at this. Could it be something else motorcycle related? Because yeah. he already knows <laughs> at least that's a thread. Like, yeah. so there's some sort of. On the you know, wall, like a in the shop, there's a poster. There's a motorcycle meet coming up. Yeah. In a couple of weeks. And they're and all going to be there. Thunder Road's there. They've got a stall. Keanu's yeah. been asked, he's going to go speak. And I'm just down like at a festival. Nothing weird about that. There's hundreds of people at this festival. They're all looking at motorbikes. <laughs> he knows I'm interested in motorbikes. This means you have to ride a motorbike in in your leather pants and walk around and like. No, no, because he knows that what I'm doing at the moment is getting back into the culture of it all, and oh, okay. I'm not sure with my hips whether I can like you know. So I'm just reengaging with the culture. That's okay. okay. I think that. Okay. He thinks that I'm interested in motorbikes. Yeah. Motorbikes are my distraction, right? Like he can you know, explain the fact that like we're bumping into each other through the fact that like he's around motorbikes and I've expressed a passion for getting back into motorbikes. So I think this is safe. If I go to a second venue, like, you know, suddenly I'm at the same like author he likes or like yeah, I yeah. feel like that's too, too far convenient. away. Too convenient, yeah. Okay. So let's just say like, you know, he's a – maybe he's one of the benefactors of this this mm -hmm. motorcycle man, whatever. He's there. Um, he's milling about. People are leaving him alone like they do. Do you make an approach again or do you engineer a situation in which you are talking? I feel like, yeah, I want him to see me. Yeah. And then, I imagine like, someone that famous, though, would mm -hmm. have a bit of facial recognition blindness because he would meet so many people who come up and say that I love you or whatever. Hear me. Yeah. What if he heard me? Yeah. When I met- <laughs> Like Heath Ledger and 10 Things I Hate About You, <laughs> you just grab the microphone, <laughs> start singing. When I uh, went to see Patton Oswalt do his book launch, he recognised me from my – we'd never met, but he recognised me from my voice hearing me on Walking the Room, which he had listened to. So what if during a – because I imagine at these things you're allowed to at least ask the people who are showing things questions or maybe there's even some forum for questions. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I ask a question. So I've yeah. got the microphone, not of him – of someone else, he hears my yeah. voice, maybe recognises the voice. Yeah. G'day, uh, Will Anderson from Australia. I was yeah. staying at the Standard I like Hotel. Falafel. I was just saying, <laughs> let me I tell did not you. Think. <laughs> if that's the standard that they think's acceptable, they got another thing coming. Give <laughs> him such booing. All right. So, does that, are you, are you saying, though, that that, 
is enough to pique Keanu's interest to come over and say good day? I mean, I hope so. What if you because if a heart it isn't, <laughs> is there a Keanu in the house? Yeah. <laughs> like you've got to get, you've got to get, you've got to get a uh, FaceTime with him to, you know. No, you're being too desperate, man. Like, you, I, I, I'm it's trying a honey to build, trap, dude. <laughs> you got to get I, it. Yeah, but I'm trying to build like a natural connection. Like, you know, I don't want to. Like if he's, you know, I'm hoping that we've got to like, put oh. a time frame on this because you can't just have forever to be friends with Keanu Reeves. Like I fucking got close with Dolph in yeah. well, like a space of two weeks. I mean, yeah, Dolph, who couldn't? Like that. Who couldn't? <laughs> yeah, this is Keanu, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I think you got to play a longer game, but at this at this time, we've only sunk like a month or two into this. Like I'd be yeah. happy to like see. Six months. six months, like I think six months to truly befriend Very him in patient. a way that felt natural. Like, okay. you know, all right. Well, if, we, if we're using that time frame, then mm. so okay, uh, this feels like it's all happened in a month. So then I'm gonna say six weeks. Give me six weeks. Oh, this has shit. happened in six weeks. Oh, sorry, that yeah. also, to the point of asking the question. So of far, the bike rally. six weeks we're in. Like, and it has to have a convenient bike festival. There has to be quite a convenient poster about something that's like how does so a, six weeks minimum. How does an undercover cop though? Like, anytime mm. you know, it's like Donnie Brasco or those guys who infiltrate bikey gangs or whatever. They don't. What do they do? They they get someone to vouch. They have for to them. do it slow too, because yeah, otherwise but, the gang's like, "Hey, we've been sold out." I reckon it might be that new guy, Greg, <laughs> <laughs> keeps complaining about the Standard Hotel. No, I. Uh, but normally, what they have is someone vouch for them. So I think yeah. that maybe you could be working this at two angles. One, you're having these little face to face yeah. encounters, but you need to identify one of the other guys from Dog Star, yeah. or someone who's a comedy fan that's a yeah. mate of his. That's a good little crossover. Like yeah, surely I, I agree with that. So that the guys in the shop, that was my first mm. one of those because you're hoping that they are kind of half vouching for me. They've already done the, you know, he seems like an okay guy. He hasn't been weird in the shop. He's asking, you know, whatever questions, this sort of thing. So I do agree with you though. A second verification would be good. I reckon one of the friends from Dogstar, like one of the other dog stars, not mm. the star, but the dog. The dog. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Dogs I have think- played a significant part in Keanu's creative life, haven't they? Like John Wick, his dog was killed. <laughs> so so dog star's dog the one star. thing you can't kill. <laughs> Didn't he play Dogsberry in Much Ado About Nothing? I don't know, that was Michael Keaton. Mm. <laughs> I get a dog and I call it Keanu. <laughs> um, I think, yes, I think- if you could meet, I accidentally meet somehow one. So I've got to identify where one of these other dog star guys are, and then I've got to infiltrate them somehow and get invited to the dog star gig by them. What about is that too convenient? Do you know any? Do you know um, who's that? Uh, what's uh, what's that guy? There's a there's a comedy came out last year with Ali Wong, and the guy from. The Young oh, Rock. Uh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. And Keanu's yeah. in that. And so they're kind mm. of common comedians, right? And they obviously are mates. And other- Do you have any connection to any of those cast or anyone? I'm, I'm like- just going to see if I can, like, work out who the other guys from Dogstar are. And let's see if we can work out how – so – Current It'd be amazing if one of them was like Alex Winter, you know, Bill from the Bill and Ted movies. The current lineup of Dogstar are Robert Mailhouse – and Brett Dom's Domrose. So they sound like made up. So they <laughs> really do. Mailhouse and Domrose. And, and you haven't even seen that Brett's spelt with one T, which again, I'm not going to yeah. judge, obviously, but uh, yeah, it does really look like that's an AI generated Sydney's, name. Yeah. <laughs> so there can't be a lot of Domroses going around, though, right? No. So if I need to find Brett Domrose, that's actually a pretty good name for me to be able to. Okay, Brett Domrose. Here we go. Who sings in Brett Domrose? Oh, here we go. I'll just go to brettdomrose.com and see what's going on with Brett Domrose. Let's find out about De- Brett Domrose. Please. Uh, Los Angeles based. There you go. All right. Yeah, composer good. Brett Domrose. Oh, he's a composer. Is a, 
Yeah, there's a seasoned musician who knows how to hold an audience's attention with his music. Did he write this himself? It sounds like he wrote it himself. <laughs> it does sound a little like he wrote it himself, both in <laughs> movies and on stage. A San Francisco Bay native. Oh, there might be a Greg Barron um, yeah. oh, connection Dave. that we could. Dave from San Francisco. That's true. He is a San Francisco. Maybe there's a Bay Area connection. Yeah. Laurie Kill Martin's from down there. We know some people. Yeah. This is a, um, this is a good path to take. Yeah, a San Francisco Bay native. He um, began his illustrious career. Yeah, he, yeah, wrote he definitely it himself wrote himself as a guitarist. <laughs> 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 uh, with the punk band The Nuns. Okay, so this is what I've got to do. Yeah, I've got to find some nuns stuff. Let's see if I can and find it. Get into the nuns. This is going to be one of my connections with him. He's like, oh, you man, I used to love that band you're in, The Nuns, right? Uh, before moving to Los Angeles where he met Keanu Reeves and Rob Marhouse, joining their band Dog Star. Um, they play at the Troubadour in West Hollywood. You know well, what? They play the one club. You, well, I mean, they play there quite a right. lot. That's their home club, I think. Uh, with their overseas success of Dog Star, he has a loyal fan base throughout Japan and has worked with – the largest promoters in that country for an outstanding eight tours to date. He really has <laughs> leaned into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Highlights of his career also include working with artists such as David Bowie and Bon Jovi. Oh, right. Is that? Yeah, not how bad, did that right? happen? Uh, if you listen to Brett's music, you will notice Hang one on, thing is this stands Wikipedia? out. No, this is his oh, website. Okay. Uh, if you listen to Brett's music, you'll notice one thing stands out, and that is honesty. When asked about his influences, Blet, oh, this is great. This is really great because I'll be Brett able to like all this shit. Yes, exactly. All right. This is uh, Brett. When I first started writing, I was listening to some very serious singer-songwriters who did it all from the heart. Tom Petty, Bono, Paul Westerberg of The Replacements, and Elton John – always sounded so convincing when they sang and I hung on every word. That sincerity is what moves me and makes me want to connect with people when I write and perform live. When I heard that you 2 had a copy of my album on their tour bus and were commenting on how much they liked the songs, I felt that I had been paid the highest compliment I could ever receive. Oh, boy. I mean, I could bring that up though, yeah. right? I heard that you 2 were really big fans now, of Now, is he talking about the nuns He'd or the dog star? It, it, no information has been given okay. here about um, – he's a TV composer. He's done soundtracks for a whole bunch of things. But, um, yeah, I think that U2 anecdote has got to be – I read once that uh, U2 were really into your music. Like was it The Nuns? Was it Dogstar? Like, you know, maybe that's a good way to like, you I know – I don't know oh, if we'll be a hell of much of this we've had to listen to or if it even will make the final cut, but let's have a listen to this. Mm. This is The Nuns. I like it. <laughs> Very punky. Not a lot of lyrics. <laughs> Million dollars. Oh, yeah. And this is what you have to do. Got a lot of, so I'm getting Blondie Transvision Vamp vibes, right? I like it. Yeah. I'm yeah. into it. I like it. I can yeah. see what uh, you two were going on about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So you befriend, oh, I've forgotten what his name already. Who is it? Brett, mm. Brett Dingleberry. Brett. What was his name? Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Dom, 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 Rose. <laughs> Dom, Dom Rose. Dom Rose. Dom. Brett Dom Rose. Okay. Dom Rose. So um, you get an introduction. Let's just say, yeah, one of your San Francisco mm. uh, comedian mates just happens to know him. And so they invite you to a dinner party. Yeah. That's a good one. Dinner party or barbecue or drinks yeah, or, nice. or, or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So this is great because Keanu, you can't use the, oh, shit, like I didn't know. But this guy, when he introduces himself, after a while, you can go, hang on, sorry, are you Brett Dog Rose? <laughs> it's like, Dom, no, I'm not. Dom Rose? Brett Dom Rose. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Are you Brett, Brett Dog Rose? 
<laughs> are you Brett Dom you? Perion? <laughs> Brett Michaels? Are you? Are you <laughs> Brett Lionel Rose? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, you, well, yeah, you do you do your research better than that. And so he goes, yeah. You, and- Brett Domrose, you're not Brett Domrose from The Nuns, are you? Oh, yeah, I am, man. I am. And you, you know The Nuns? Oh, my God. Like, yeah, I, I love, you know what I love? Like, Blondie, Transvision Vamp. Like, yeah, The Nuns man, that's always what, felt to me like well, we, should have been bigger. Yeah. Should have been bigger well, than we that. Were, like, 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 we, just, were, we came out the same time as Blondie. I don't know why I'm not doing the accent for Brett. I just <laughs> can't be fucked. Well, you don't really know what his accent <laughs> no, is. Like, true. I mean, I guess San Franciscan, but you don't really Well, it know. says here that they played a song in 77, so I'm assuming he was around, like, that's Blondie era, but before Transvision Vamp. In fact, Transvision Vamp, I think, ripped us off, to be honest. They were a more commercial yeah, I, version of us could not agree more like all i could ever think when they were having all that success was gee they owe a lot to the nuns no oh, thanks man it's really good you know you too uh were big fans of of the nuns apparently they had an album that they would take them on their tour bus and that's actually you too were yeah, nuns fans and that's probably one of the greatest compliments i've ever been paid <laughs> mate it would be like you too are you kidding me like the biggest band in the world and they were None fans of the nuns. Yeah. Do, do you know who in particular in the band was a fan? Was it the whole band? Like, was there someone who all was like? All of them. Apparently, they all loved it. They all loved they it. They all loved it. Yeah. Well, well. Sorry, was your name Will? It's, it's Will, yeah, right? Will. Yeah. One so, out I don't also. know if you know. You I've had, I've had Brett, a fairly right? illustrious career, <laughs> I mean, and I'd say the one thing that I, yeah. I'm noted for is my honesty. And when I honestly oh, yeah. tell you that all of you two listened and loved my album, you can be guaranteed that I'm telling the truth. Man, that's amazing. I live by certain standards, Will. <laughs> so, so what are you what are you doing now then? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I'm still gigging. I compose a bit. Um, I'm in a band. Uh, do you know Keanu Reeves? Yeah, I mean, who doesn't know Keanu Reeves, yeah, right. right? Sorry, I just, you know, it's silly. But to weirdly say. enough, I'll tell you the story in a sec, but tell me what the connection is. Oh, so he's got a band called Dogstar. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'm the lead oh, singer. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, are, you, are you serious? Yeah. You play in Dogstar you know with Dog Keanu Star? Reeves? Mate, I've heard of Dogstar. I just like don't know as much. About, I, I would by this stage. I'd actually know lots okay. about Dogstar. Right. I wouldn't know. Like, it's I'll let weird you do that edit. I got. It's weird that I would have got to this point in this like long con. But the one thing I've refused to do <laughs> listen is to listen Dogstar. to any Dogstar. So I felt like, yeah, man, love Dogstar. I, you know what? Now that you mention it. Like that, of course I knew that you were in that band. I don't even know why. Sorry, man. Like I'm this California weed, you know what I'm saying? It's like, but um, hey, this is such a weird coincidence. I have been trying to get back into um, riding a motorbike, but I got bad hips and I've been hanging out at that motorbike shop. Now you should go talk to Reeves. He'll he'll help you out. Oh, you have been. I literally ran into him at his ah, shop. I didn't realise that he went in there. Yeah, yeah, right. Like he's, he's in there quite a lot and we had a chat. He like, oh, he's the best. Cool dude. He's like the best. really, yeah. yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, yeah. really. Loves falafel. Yeah, mate, he, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. He told me about that falafel oh, that's place. Hilarious. Like, that's hilarious. Oh, cool. Oh, well, man. yeah, well, we're like, gigging again. Yeah, we've, we've, we've are got you kidding a, me? Yeah, the, are you the doing the any shows in town? Yeah, every every weekend we do a, a, do a, a 9 p.m. show at the Troubadour on a Saturday night. Are you night. serious? Yeah, yeah, you should come along. Oh, man, I've, yeah, I'm definitely going to come. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll put for... your name on the door. Are you kidding me? No, 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 my pleasure, my pleasure. Got to help out an Aussie. <laughs> Oh man, that is honestly the nicest. Uh, do you guys ever do the nuns ever do gigs? No, no, no. They're all in jail. Oh, oh, what happened? Was it like a pussy riot? I <laughs> know, <laughs> <laughs> oh, complicated story. They, uh, the band, they attempted to kill Transvision Vamp, and they were arrested. Uh, oh, all in jail. okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. For a while, the nuns were on the run. <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So now you go to it. Now, yeah. So now, dog and because gig. the thing, and when I took it back to the nuns, it was just reassuring him that I wasn't in it for the, the celebrity, dog star that I all. was in it to go and see dogs there. It's brilliant. It's the same thing as me bringing up Dolph Lundgren's mm-hmm. TED Talk. You give yeah. something that he's passionate about. And I love that you brought up like the U2 thing and stuff because it's just, I did the same thing with Dolph. This is like textbook. You just bring up stuff from their past that you've read online, but you weave it yeah. into the conversation. <laughs> That it's they're like, clearly yeah. proud about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you can, yeah, absolutely. Inceptible. Okay, so it's a week later. Mm-hmm. You're at the Dog Star gig. Um, your yeah. name was on the door. Mm-hmm. It's all great. Um, they finished the gig. Now, of course, there's going to be heaps of people trying to 
you know, get Keanu's photo or whatever like that. So they get off stage pretty quickly. How are you going to let him know you're there? And have you swapped numbers? You must have. I reckon you would have because you'd be like, hey, man, can I grab your number and I'll just text you if I'm bringing a guest or anything? I feel like if we're at a party where we've like, I feel like I would give my number to someone at a party because there's this implicit sort of, like that sort of yeah gathering where you're like you're here with some people who've already kind of vouched for you in the sense that you're both here and whatever. Yeah, I think that like you can ask and you know, by then at some stage I've probably introduced I've never done this to Keanu, but I think to him on that day, he's probably asked me at some stage to, What do you do? How do you know like, you know, Greg and Dave or whatever's, you know, the situation I found myself in. I'm like, yeah. I'm actually a stand-up comedian. I'm out here from like, you know. Blah, and that's blah, blah. good because game recognises game, right? You're both performers. Right. Yeah. You're doing stage time. You could even throw him an invite. Oh, yeah, yeah. look, hey, man, I'm actually doing some shows actually, here. Yeah. If you want to come, you know, to let me yeah, know how many When he offers me the ticket to the gig and I go, hey, and anytime I do a bunch of shows around town, they're really fun. Sometimes I even do some podcasts with like Dave and whatever, like, if you ever want to come to anything like that, if that's your jam, yeah. I'm at the UCB pre reg Do you feel bad like- about any of this that you're <laughs> using Brett Goldfrap for <laughs> to make Keanu? I mean, you know what? I'm you not, might I- make a friend along the way. He might be a genuinely good dude, Mate, and then you got two. The friends. thing about stalking Keanu Reeves is the friends you make along the way. <laughs> I've got the guys at the bike shop. I've got lifelong friends I made at that bike meet that I went to. Like, yeah, was, this is great. You know, I think the, I think you honestly think you should do this. Yeah, I think, like it's time got for something new- to talk to you two about if I ever run into them. Yeah, like- yeah totally. All right, so yeah, um, you've got his number. The yeah. gig's finished. They've got a stage. I, I message him after the gig. Great Loved show. It. Thanks so much for the tickets. Just wanted to say how amazing the show was. He's like, come um, backstage. I'll meet you at the door. Come okay. um, say hello to everyone. Sounds good. Okay. So you go yeah. back. It's- and I think I'm safe backstage. I'm a safe backstage bring because he knows I'm in the business. You haven't brought anyone Like I with know you. the rules of anything. I'm just there by myself to yep. see the band. Yep. Yep. Great. No hassle. Yep. So you go backstage. I'm not drunk. I'm not like, you know, I'm just- they're, they're having yeah. a couple of post-show drinks. It's just Keanu and the other um, guy, the other dog star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and maybe one or two people, but it's not yeah. like a party. It's just like, band. they're just like sweaty and, and just get over it. What do you say to Keanu? <laughs> oh, he says, hey, man. Hey. Hey, um, so good to see you again. I thought the yeah, show Brett was. Yeah, Brett said uh, you, uh, you met him at a party. That's that's quite yeah, a we coincidence. Some- <laughs> <laughs> Imagine so weird. he does that. Like, he opens yeah. fucking <laughs> like suspect. How do you dig your way out of that? Do you start panicking? If I'm like, oh, yeah, I was like, man, I totally hear you. Like I came over here so worried that like I, w- I was just going to be in this city with like as many people as my entire country. And then I've just realized it's like being at home. You run into the same people <laughs> all the time and everybody knows everybody um yeah what a great guy he is i can see like man just all of you together are just incredible like oh, yeah? the way you yeah, perform what was your Thank favorite you. track um i want to be your dog star <laughs> <laughs> and then you're a good you're a good boy i like that one how much is that dog twinkle, star in twinkle. the window <laughs> dog star <laughs> all the all the hits <laughs> okay so i'll give you I'll give you two minutes mm-hmm. with Keanu. So the other guys is they're helping the road crew uh-huh. pack down the set. So he's just so it's just you and him sitting mm-hmm. on a couch. You got two minutes to seal the deal. Go. What am, what deal am I trying to seal? Friendship. You setting up a like a, a, a date with Keanu. What like a one on one? Yeah, or some kind of like let's hang out again. Like you've nah, got it's too soon. Really? Yeah. Sorry, what are you doing? I mean, do we have to do a two part episode? I'm part of, on this I'm part of the. We might have to- no, I'm, I'm just like I'm saying now. I'm part of the world. Okay, I am not a we- like I can be in that dog star world, that kind of extended universe now, and then it becomes a crime of opportunity. Like okay. I can't make i can't rush it like in that moment i've got to let that perfect i've got to be a cool hang yeah someone who's just around but like prove over a period of hangs that that i am 
like not going to pitch him a movie. Yeah. I'm not going to try to leverage our relationship for any other purpose other than just like I'm a good hang. I like coming to see the band. You know what? Over the weeks I'll probably learn the names of some of the songs so I'm more convincing around, you know, what the names of the songs are. But in a general sense, I'm just – now I'm just in the universe and I'll just gradually – like worm my way towards him. I mean, look, we're almost at the end of the episode. Mm. This does warrant a sequel, but I'm going to let it sit. If the audience demands to know how this story completes Well, itself, I don't know how it ends I know. now. Like, well, you don't. We still we could we could map this out like over the next kind no, of No, but few I think this is the pro- I think the position you're now in is You've got to like, I mean, we could finish this if you want to give me a range of scenarios of things that could happen over the next three months. Yeah. Like, I will. but I just need I'll to come wait up. for the perfect moment. <laughs> like, I don't want to like. I reckon you know, that's a I good don't... challenge. I reckon I can do that. Mm. I reckon I will come up with some okay. scenarios over a three month period where you yeah. find yourself with Keanu and yes. see if you can become friends with the Keanu Reeves. We'll call it the Keanu Project. Okay. I'll only do it though if audience the audience demands it. If enough people want us to, because maybe this has been the most indulgent episode of Tofop. Yeah. This is Tofop. This is classic Tofop. I reckon this episode. is one of the greats. I got to be honest with <laughs> it's you. Been great. I'm, I'm going to call. I'm going to call it right now. This feels like we're back in the fucking <laughs> groove. Cooking. This yeah. is what Tofop is all about. This one. <laughs> so if you want us to talk about this more, uh, you can let us know on social media or send us an email. You can go to tofop.com. Uh, there's a contact form there, and while you're there, you can check out some of our other great podcasts, including uh, Tofop with Friends. I uh, just completed The Unexplained Explained, the series I did with Ben McClay. And, Will, I have just one letter here from someone about The Unexplained Explained. Uh, this is from Tony. He says, guys, I'm loving the series. Um, I'm not the Tony you're thinking of, but feel free to read this in his voice. Okay, so I guess I can use his surname. It's from Tony Martin. <laughs> oh, it's not the Tony it's Martin. It's not the Tony Martin. No, it's not either of the Tony Martins because there is Tony Martin it's comedian. Uh, there is Tony Martin New, actor. New Zealand born Australian legend comedian Tony Martin, and then the actor, and then Blue Murder actor and father Reverend Bob. Tony Reverend Martin. Bob from E Street. Um, he said, "I just thought I'd mention that I cured my aunt's belief in ghosts, and she was even sure her cat had seen a particular ghost. The moment I saw what she was looking at under the right lighting, I recognised as one of many peripheral drift optical illusions, which is a, apparently a thing. I showed her and her cat on a tablet on the ground a slideshow of these particular illusions, which you can find at peripheraldrift.glitch.me." You need a larger screen uh, to, than a phone to see the effect. The cat reacted exactly like it had seen the ghost. And my aunt, after a few minutes of watching the slideshow in silence, burst into laughter and couldn't stop saying how silly she felt. I had to assure her that seeing ghosts is still common enough that people even make podcasts about them. Yes. We've had many listeners uh, get in contact with their own ghost stories. Even a couple of listeners come on the show. Uh I loved making The Unexplained Explained. I want to make more. It feels like people have an appetite for more. If you have stories that you want me to investigate, and it doesn't have to be ghosts, it can be any kind of weird story, please send them along. I'll start compiling them and then uh, doing a bit of research and bringing back The Unexplained Explained. And I, I and I will just do a very short podcast called "That's Not Real." That's not real. <laughs> that thing's not real. That's definitely not real. That is definitely not real. And that one's not real either. The end. My series. The unexplained. The unexplained. Absolutely explained. Very quickly. <laughs> you can do an after unexplained explained a podcast yeah. called the after the unexplained explained explained again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. My podcast, The Unexplained Explained, <laughs> Optical Illusion, Wind, Mental Illness, Photo, <laughs> a Weird Obsession. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Lossby is also back in fun form. Yes. Heaps of great, very comedy focused uh, uh, run of philosophy at the moment. Really brilliant comedians on the show, too. Like, just find your favorite episodes and check it out. But one thing I wanted to mention, and I wanted to give it a little bit of time before I did mention it was um that my you know great friend cal wilson obviously passed away and everybody be aware of that and it was all a bit too raw and sad to say too much about it at the time and you know was keeping all those emotions pretty private but she was someone who you know touched our world um and you know someone that i knew very well and and loved very much and uh there is an episode of course uh, of philosophy with cal wilson I don't like – I've had a 
unfortunately, a few people who've been on Willosophy have died. And there's always the question that gets asked, which is, do you, you know, launch, do you put an episode up or, you know, that, that re put it up the top of the feed? I, yeah. I don't, I don't like to do that, but I will let people know that there is a Cal Wil- Wilson episode of Willosophy if you want to go and find it. And just, you know, beware, because I do talk to people about death, obviously, in those episodes. So just beware of the fact that that, is going to be part of the conversation. If that's something you're up for, I know that a few of her friends and family have found some comfort in having a listen to it. So if people want to have a listen to that, then that is there also. And, of course, the best way to support the show is still uh, via our Patreon. Um, uh, you get ad-free uh, versions of the show. You get full-length videos of TOEFOP up there. And uh, we've got a chat room we've got multiple chat rooms going where people can do episode discuss- discussions ask me questions so if you want to get involved like that you can patreon.com slash tofop we uh, need to finish this very quickly because my computer is about to run out of power <laughs> okay. and i have to plug it in all right well i guess that's <laughs> as good as any way to finish i'm charlie clausen uh, i'm will edison 